You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. Welcome to another episode of Combat Radio. I want to actually quickly, before we introduce uh, some of the stellar players we've got today, I want to actually say and point out some news and notes. Uh, one of our favorite Combat Radio veterans, Dizzy Reed, is on tour with Guns N' Roses, just kicked off in Moscow. Go to GunsNRoses.com, find the dates. He's always a great interview. Robbie Krieger. Of the Doors, another great combat radio veteran Good guy, guy we'd love guy. to have in here. He has got some interesting things happen on the charity front, and we'd actually advise you to go to the RobbieKrieger.com. And uh, J. Rowe of the Alcoholics, another one of our favorites, has just flown back to Scandinavia to start his tour, and you can find that at Mr. Navarro or not me does on Twitter. And uh, now with us to start this show, and it's going to be a, a battery of craziness. This is, of course, one of our favorites. Marathon. Uh, a, ma- a marathon. The guy who can't seem to understand his own invoices is no, uh, steady on there. the big robot. Uh, you know him from as Bumblebee in Transformers 1, 2, and 3. Soon 4, so the rumor goes. But also he was a regular on Robin in Robin Hood and a bunch of other crazy shit. Mark Ryan, how are Hello. You? Good morning, chaps. Hello, the world. That's what I say. Uh, Welcome. Dean Haglin of the X-Files and Lone Gunman will be joining us shortly. He went up to the cupcake shop because he couldn't <laughs> apparently wait uh, till later. <laughs> Producer the Phil Lairness. The cupcakes... The yeah. cupcake is out there? The cupcake guess, uh, is out there. Phil Lairness yeah. known as the cupcake. Cu- the cupcake. Oh, well. Phil Lairness. Please don't... <laughs> when I worked for the company, yes, uh, that was my cover name. Now, the cupcake. real quick, let me give this guy a proper introduction. Phil not only hosts the Chill Pack Hollywood Hour, which is a great show that's been going for six years, even though Mark Ryan and I have never, never been, been invited, to, invited to be on it. We hear it's still somewhat interesting. Um, <laughs> it's a fantastic show, actually, in all seriousness. But you're the producer of The Truth is Out There one and soon to be the truth is out there too and we are in that combat radios in truth is out there too so you're gonna have to check out truth is out there one indeed and no i was not the producer of uh, truth is out there i was uh, executive producer should have been i directed that it. that is a producing title i, mean, I hate to stop you i directed it pro- i i shot it i edited it uh i conceived of it but i was not the producer lyle scozy was the producer let's not contradict me when i'm handing out titles and yet i am <laughs> producer Ly- i am producer phil Lernis. don't don't kid yourself now actually the big unveiling one of our special guests we couldn't wait to get this guy on we've all been battling tragedy including this gentleman but one of the guys we've had an urgency to try to book on this show he's one of our favorites i'm not sure quite how to classify him although he's a very very <laughs> smart guy and part of the ultra hip show ancient aliens uh Professor, would you say? Professor's Professor? fine. Professor Michael's Mike fine, Dennon. too. Michael, Michael <laughs> Denon of Ancient Aliens fame. Yeah. How are you? Novice. Great. Good to be here. And are we allowed to say where your professor at? Yes. Uh, yes, at UC, UC Irvine. Irvine. Uh, yeah. I get that's a great scene down yeah. there. No, man. that's a lot of fun. How long have you been working down there? 15 years. Wow. Yeah, no, don't, yeah. don't transfer out of there. Yeah, no, it's awesome. That is awesome. Of uh, physics. Physics, yes, professor of physics. One of the things we like about you uh, <laughs> is not only personality-wise, obviously, but you're one of the few people with an actual credit that's respectable <laughs> on Ancient Aliens. No, I mean, there's folklorists, there's guys right. that have written, like, The Fourth Reich, and, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, Chariots of the Gods. There's interesting authors and, like, comic book publishers and stuff, yeah. but you're a guy that steps in there really with a legitimate physics background, the PhD, and you're the guy, it seems like, I mean, it's a master, it's a, it's a clinic in, in, in TV editing. Oh, the they way, do a great job. Oh, yeah, the way they bounce around, and they always seem to bounce to you when it's time for credibility. Bang, go to Mike Dennett yep. and explain how the Bell Nazi time machine works. Exactly. <laughs> the Bell, now, we'll get onto that. Now, there you go. I should warn you, Mark Ryan is a big ad, he believes all of this shit. The pyramids okay. were built okay. by aliens, the Aztecs, No, aliens. that's not true. Don't get, let's not go off on that tangent. <laughs> No, I, there's a lot of stuff that I'm fascinated by and interested, particularly the physics. And we've right. talked a lot about in the show about how physics and magic have almost come nose to nose. It's amazing, yeah. It's amazing. When you start talking about creating antimatter at, at the Lars Hedron Collider, we grew up with spaceships that were being driven by matter antimatter engines. So to me, to actually have a, somebody say, we held antimatter in a magnetic trap for six and a half minutes and then it self-annihilated itself. To me, that's kind of like, wow. Let me stop him right there, not to interrupt you, (laughs) Phil, but we're always kind of not, we're not necessarily sure, since Mark Ryan has lived in the covert sector for so long, where his information is coming from, so we can't challenge it. (laughs) 
So if you hear something that you think, well, I don't know. Well, this is the chance this today. Is the chance. This is the chance. Exactly. Stuff today. Yeah. Phil, you we, to say well, I, I just, you know, I just came back from uh, the UK where we were shooting parts for Truth Is Out There too, Ancient Mysteries. Nice and way to plug it. I was supposed to be yeah. in in France, and I postponed uh, part of it because I knew we did not have enough time to do this part of the shoot correctly, and it was to go into some of the underground bunkers where the Nazis. Uh, experimented with their flying saucer right. technology right. and we would be the first camera crew allowed in there and so I've been immersing myself in research for this and one of the things people keep asking me and it's it comes back to this idea of you know magic meeting physics is uh, is it true that the Nazis were really really interested in researching paranormal and supernatural and what's fascinating to me in reading our own uh, yes, CIA, yeah. well, but but our own intel post-war when we were our, when, when our troops, the U.S. troops, were you know, going through Germany trying to get our hands on every bit of technology we could before our allies could, that what came through was yes and no. They weren't interested so much in supernatural and paranormal as they were researching their own belief that ancient cultures had technological Absolutely. advancement. And that, is, okay. that is proof that yeah. here on Combat Radio we let everyone have their own opinion. Right, <laughs> and we respect them as such because I really think the only thing we were interested in when we were putting the OSS and switching it over to the CSA, CIA is Russian manufacturing numbers and shit like that. Well, no, but no, no, no. I mean, I may be no. wrong. I may no, but wrong. you can still get the the original what's called. I am not making this up. The original Lusty report that uh, that catalogs all the intel that we gathered in terms of technology. And you, you're absolutely right. What we were really going after, at least initially, and we were brilliant, it was brilliantly set up, the plan to go after this, was manufacturing technology. The and at the same time, we came across, you know, we didn't even know about how widespread the Nazis' underground factory facilities were. Okay. And once we found all this, then there were these, you know, additional treasure troves of information that led to other research. There, there so were two were interesting trying? branches. Oh, oh sorry. There, yeah. there were two interesting branches. You, um, Fascinated to hear what you've got to say about the that side of it, particularly about the Bell side of it. One was the, the fact that they were flying a thing called the Horton Wing in 1938, which had a, was a tailless airplane that looked like the stealth bomber today. They actually two brothers called the, they actually had a thing called the Horton Wing, which they flew before the war even broke out. And so they were that far advanced in their thinking, the Germans. But the other thing was there was a real department called the Ananeb whose job it was to go around the world and gather mystical, magical objects to prove this concept that Thuringian history, the pre, uh, the, the history of the Nazis and going back to Iceland actually did exist. And the Brits had their own department called the London Controlling Section that waged magical warfare psychological warfare well, Mike's, the Mike's getting ready to walk out of here so let's yeah. 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 And, uh, <laughs> he's already had enough but, oh, this, come on, we but, but, but I am fascinated Georgios. by this idea that, <laughs> right, yeah. that let's face it if we do not understand a technology if we do not understand especially the power the energy how the energy is being harnessed of course it's going to seem like magic it's going to seem like paranormal. It's going to seem like supernatural, you know, or we're going to say, oh, boy, those ancient cultures, they spent a lot of time creating that pottery, not realizing that that pottery actually, if you put it together, works as a battery. Yeah, well, you know, one of the weird things is I've always had trouble with the word the supernatural and the paranormal that's then used to describe something that looks completely normal that you just don't understand. Right. right. I mean, that's always been a weird thing, um, not to pick on people, but, you know, like when they do ghost hunting. Right. right, and they talk about oh, we're going to image a thermal signature or an electrical signature. Those are normal things. Electricity and thermal stuff we know, right? If you detect electricity, you're detecting electricity. Why are you declaring it paranormal? That is always something mm. I've had trouble with. But again, with the ancient technologies, what fascinates me is half the time we don't know what it is, and that's what allows you to like speculate all the way from it was just a rock <laughs> or yeah. a piece of pottery to it was an alien um, you know communicating device well it's so <laughs> right, right, right. you know it's like <laughs> it's so interesting how the prism through which we view this uh, that you know this technology that we don't understand it it so often goes one way or the other either we deride it in a way that allows us to maintain our superiority to that ancient culture right. or quite to the contrary we build it up so dramatically so that we can feel in inferior to that ancient culture. but but when we build it up notice we never say it's the ancients that did it it was always the aliens uh, well right if it's impressive <laughs> it was aliens if it's not impressive but as, it was as, as mark and i have talked about vis-a-vis -vis the the uh the Thank pyramids you. though 
might we not be actually just talking about their illegal aliens? Oh, yeah. That it was illegal <laughs> aliens <laughs> that built the pyramids? <laughs> no, no, yeah, all those join, immigrants. I was coming from this point of view. There was a, there was a big question about um, vitrification of Iron Age hill forts in the UK, about whether you could actually melt rock to create these vitrified hill forts. And some years ago, they actually did an experiment where they actually built what they thought the mixture of stone and earth of, of, of the side of a hill fort, they put wood up against it, they put it in a, a, a windy place so that the wind would fuel the fire, they kept putting the wood on, and guess what? The what rock the melted. What the fuck are you talking and about? And vitrified <laughs> hill fort. Your guest knows what I'm talking about. Why don't you ask He's the him? only one. He's got the PhD in the room. You know what? When Is General Zod joining General us later? Oh, right. God, I'm no. going to ask, mercy, I'm gonna ask no. General Zod the question, what the hell is Mark Ryan talking about? <laughs> General? <laughs> he, he's, he, the general is contemplating his answer at this of point. <laughs> but, I'm see, sure. I think the cool thing is what you just said is how many it just proves how smart people are how many people out here now have looked at something and said you know I may not know exactly how those people did it but here's a way they could have they done it done. Right. and they come up and do it and recreate it just proving the point that people are smart and can do stuff. Uh, you see, I think that the ancient civilizations were much smarter, were much better uh, educated than we give them credit for. Oh, I think so. I, I I've got that. a book called The Wildwood Tarot, which is out at the moment, which is about what are called the European Ye Wheel of the Year. And so it's based on the concept, like very much like the Native American Indian uh, medicine wheel, where the midwinter solstice and the midsummer solstice were their points of the year not christmas right. new year no, it was to do with the where the sun set and that's how stonehenge why stonehenge was built the way it was and new grange in ireland to this day on the, i think it's the midwinter solstice the sun comes up or the, it's midsummer solstice and shines straight down that long long tunnel into the heart of a burial mound how did they do that well, they had nothing else to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I, I always, you know, I want to follow up on that. I always feel like I would be a much more famous physicist if I didn't have TV. On your computer, on your Wi-Fi radio, on your iPhone, commercial-free original talk, only on L.A. Talk Radio, your favorite talk station. Favorite talk station.